welcome to legal talks in today's topic we are going to discuss a very important theory analytical theory of john austin so let us get started with analytical theory of john austin so let us have some uh, reflection on the basic facts so the first one is john austin considered the term positivism or he was the one to introduce the term for or positivism which primarily or mainly focused on the law as it is okay so in the views of austin so law should be considered as it is okay at any point of time it has to be if anything is related to law it has to be judged on that uh circumstances or situations okay next and as it is a uh, law of positivism is as it is means at any point of time it has got no reference to the past or future okay so it completely ignores uh the influence of either the past or the future so that means law ought to be means if it is a situation related to law it should be based on the present context okay what is right should be considered as right what is wrong should be considered as wrong positive law is perfect and jurisprudence subject so as per <coughs> the views of john austin in his view positive law is the perfect law and it is the subject matter of jurisprudence so positive law as judicial uh, judicial norms established by state okay so in the words or for john austin when he says positive law it all uh, the judicial norms okay the no, uh, rules and regulations which a common man cannot escape and who frames this norms this norms are framed by the state okay the highest authority in a nation so there is no escape everyone has to abide to such norms law as a command of political authority john austin john austin considered a uh, command as a political authority political authority in the sense so the highest person and the highest person in the hierarchy or in uh the government okay uh, he played a major role and any statement or any rule that is given by the political authority has to be followed by one and all alike there should not be any sort of deviance <clears throat> as per john austin as it focuses on command it is also referred as imperative school of jurisprudence okay now J john austin and his theory lays more emphasis again and again he stresses importance of uh the command since there's a lot of importance emphasized a lot of impos importance laid on the command it is also referred as imperative school of jurisprudence in positive law analysis okay the main thing is uh, the main drawback we can say in positive law analysis it ignores sociological historical moral and ethical aspects so one of the major drawbacks of analytical theory of john austin there are other drawbacks also which we'll be looking at as a, as a later part of the lesson but since <clears throat> we have the very basic facts uh, related to analytical theory of john austin it has to be recognized that he completely ignored aspects of sociological historical moral and ethical aspects only thing that he emphasizes more in analytical theory is <clears throat> is on the command and on the sovereign okay so he focuses primarily on these two aspects 
right so let's move on further now let us get started with uh, analytical theory of john austin what does he say so he uses a, the term command a lot repeatedly in his a lot and repeatedly in his uh, statements again and again okay so what exactly is uh, it okay now if when we talk about law okay what does analytical <coughs> theory of john austin state about the law john austin states that law is a command of the sovereign backed by sanction okay he says the word as or he defines the law as law is a command of the sovereign okay law is a command of a sovereign backed by sanction okay so his theory is also called as imperative theory because it is it emphasizes on command okay next so when he uses the term command what exactly command means so command it is the expression or of a wish or desire so what is an command it is a wish it is a wish or desire to another okay to implement or forbear forbear means to politely deny okay or uh, politely or patiently restrain an impulse of doing a thing okay politely doing doing okay either to implement or forbear from doing a particular act coupled with an intimation that in case he does not comply with it he will be visited with civil consequences now here we can observe uh, very clearly what the command is so basically a command is a wish or desire okay of a person with an option to either implement it or not to implement it okay that has to be related to a particular act okay and here the person is also intimated that if he doesn't obey or he doesn't follow the command then he may be then he may be a victim or he has to face the leak uh, evil consequences now what does this words evil consequences signify here the words here evil consequences signifies sanction means if a person fails <coughs> to uh, fulfill a command or go against a command then he has to face the sanctions so components of a command so basically we can divide this command into <coughs> two components so the first component is a duty and second component is sanctions now what is a duty duty is obligation to follow or comply okay now whenever a command is given to a person so for the person it becomes a duty now duty in that case means obligation obligation means he cannot say no okay it has become a command so when it has become an co command he has to follow it he has to adhere to it and he has to fulfill the command okay now what if he fails to follow the command or he fails to obligate the command then he has to face sanctions so what is a sanction sanction as a sort of uh, a penalty sanction is a sort of penalty or punishment okay so evil that results with non compliments of command okay so when does a sanction come into existence sanction comes into existence when someone fails to fulfill his duty okay in the absence of fulfilling the duty it gives rise to a sanction okay so sanction is nothing but an evil that results with non compliance of command okay so the evil is nothing but a penalty or a punishment which a person has to face so further uh, he divides this commands into two categories so one is 
particular associated command or general command or it is also sometimes referred as their law or rule okay now let us first look at what is a particular associated command now in case of particular associated command of john austin it's an obligation specific obligation or particular act or forbearance so here it is specifically laid down so if a person is instructed then he has to fulfill the command at any cost or if a person is asked not to be a part of uh, a certain thing then he should refrain he should not <laughs> put any effort to uh, do such a thing so that is particular okay a specific command right now what is a general command or uh, law or rule okay so it's a general obligation of acts of forbearance of a class okay now of a class or here he is talking about a group of people okay now general laws or uh, laws that are framed for a particular category for a particular class okay now this general part uh, particular category or rules for a general category doesn't allow or doesn't bring all the people under one umbrella they are the ones which have to be sp specifically adhered to one particular clause okay like for example if uh, the government or the sovereign <coughs> uh, gives a command like uh, all the schools should remain closed keeping in uh, keeping in view the uh, cyclone okay like let us take a situation like where there is a severe cyclone okay and the risk factor of floods affecting the area or high now in such case the sovereign may release an order to all the schools that they should be completely shut down they should not operate till the further orders now what is happening here now here the law or rule is laid down for one specific class of children okay hope you understand this two types of command one is particular or associated command another one is general command law or rule okay then he talks about sanction now what is a sanction so sanction basically signifies a method of corcoin to enforce the command not leaving the citizen free to obey the law or not as one pleases but to make him obey whether one likes it or not now what is a sanction so as we have discussed earlier it is a penalty or punishment but here john austin makes it very clear signifies means it makes it very very evident what that <clears throat> in case of a person not fulfilling a specific command okay issued by the sovereign okay the citizen has no freedom okay uh, he has to obey the law whether he likes it or not so there is no freedom given to the citizen here the fr the citizen is restricted okay if it is a sanction if a sanction is laid on a citizen then the citizen has to abide the citizen has to uh, fulfill that particular sanction he cannot go a as per his will so here we can say hills his or citizens will persons will completely becomes nullified completely becomes void okay only thing that he has to do as per john austin as he has no other way out he has to obey whether he likes it or not okay now this is also one of the areas which shows that uh, the sovereign is very powerful okay so or in other words we can say in case of john austin's theory analytical theory 
the command cannot be challenged. If there is a sanction imposed on a command, hook or crook such a sanction has to be followed. There is no escape from such a sanction. Okay, then further he defines the term sovereign. Now, in the words of John Austin, if a determinate human superior, not in a habit of obedience to a like superior, receives habitual obedience from the bulk of a given society, that de determinate is sovereign in that society. And the society, including the sup superior, is a society political and independent. Now, here, while defining sovereign, John makes, to, makes it very clear that <clears throat> who can be a sovereign, he should be a determinate human superior. Okay, and he talks about habitual obedience, means he should have his free will and he should also be of the highest order and it should not or he should not be a person or the body should not be projected by few. It should be a body of governance that is that has come into existence with the support of many. Now, what which word tells us the many? The word bulk here takes tells us that <coughs> the sovereign is a human body, okay, which is free from obedience, and it should have been formed by the majority of the people in the society, okay, and <coughs> it should be having the governing power or it should be formed on the basis of political and it should be acting as an independent body. Now, we have just looked at the definition. Let us further try to analyze and understand the definition of sovereign in detail. So first he talks about obedience must be habitual or permanent. Okay. Now here he says that <clears throat> whenever a sovereign is formed, the people in that sovereign should be obedient. Okay. And which type of obedience? It should be a permanent obedience. Means it should not happen that uh, a person or a group of people who are listening to the government today and the next day they show their back or they are against the government. No. In terms of John Austin, he says it should be a permanent obedience. Means if <clears throat> the sovereign says or makes a law, so the law has to be followed by all alike. There should not be any voice that has been raised against the law, sovereign law. Now, it should not be habitual. Habitual in the, it, it, it must be habitual and it must be permanent means there should not be any voice that is heard against the governance okay sovereign must be superior in the society so there should not be any other body in uh, the governance which is controlling the sovereign it should be the highest order in the society and it should be selected by the bulk people of the society superior must be common to the entire society now the people who are playing a lead role in the sovereign okay must be common to the entire society so they cannot be uh, multiple sovereigns in one society independent of outside imperative control at no point of time the sovereign should be under pressure or should be controlled by an external body so it should be a completely independent and it should have total control on its system it should be the only one and only uh, one form of lawmaking body Okay, it should not be influenced by other uh, groups or other bodies and it should act independently. 
Let's move on. Okay, let us look at essential features of sovereignty. Okay, Essen, uh, essential in every state. Okay, so the primary thing is as per John Austin. So in order for the law to flourish, it is essential that there is existence of sovereignty in every state. Every state should have its own, its own uh, sovereignty body indivisible it cannot be divided okay so sovereign cannot be divided you cannot support uh, you cannot divide the power powers of sovereignty okay it should be uh, done on a single-handed basis unlimited and uh, illimitable in power so the powers that are given the powers or that are assigned to the sovereign should be unlimited okay means the sovereign in one word should be a body which has total control of its system and it discharges all the powers and there should be no uh, limit for its power the territory or all the things should be brought under the control of sovereignty okay so these are the three essentials of sovereignty one so it is essential uh, body in every state two it cannot be uh, divided three it enjoys or it should enjoy unlimited and illimitable power uh, <clears throat> in the nation power in a particular nation now let us further look at classification of law as per uh, John Austin. Now basically John Austin classifies law into two categories. So what are the two categories? Laws properly so called and laws improperly so called. So he basically divides law into two categories. One laws properly so called means this are the laws which are in a way true laws in in the eyes of john austin so he further divides this laws properly so called as two types one divine law another one is human law so here divine law is something which is uh, <clears throat> which is of divine nature or in a way we can say here he is referring to the natural laws okay the laws <coughs> which are endowed which are blessed on all the humanity alike okay natural laws or a, a form of laws which cannot be adhered okay and the laws which are religious in nature and which are uh, considered uh, to be good and doing some good to the society so those laws he put them as one category and other laws he talked as human laws okay now in this category he called them as human law human law obviously these are the laws that are framed by humans now <clears throat> why human laws as uh, people's people evolve their living conditions change okay their contributions change and when living conditions and contributions change uh, this may lead to possible changes in uh, life standards and possible ch changes may bring in new crime or creates at least a demand or a situation where law has to be further endorsed for law has to be further endorsed and strengthened so as per john austin the human law can be again categorized as positive law and law set by man not as political uh, superior okay now what is this positive law now positive law here again is talking about uh, the basic structure of the uh, law that is 
law as it is okay law as it is and it doesn't take into consideration uh, as per the john austin either the past present or future if something is related to law it should be related to that particular issue it has got nothing to do either with the past or with the future okay so in short uh, positive law is nothing but law that ought to be so if it is uh, a certain thing related to law it has to be accepted only in that dimension there is no further deviation as per john austin okay and second thing that he says law set by men not as political superior now now law that is framed is framed by uh, the people with a main intention of doing good to the society now here he is again talking about not categorizing the law okay so in the words or in the views of john austin if a law is framed so that law should be framed on the concept of doing good to all it should not be based on political superior superior okay so like for example if one government is formed and the government brings in a law that is doing some good to a particular category of people then in that case john austin doesn't consider it as a good law okay so he talks about it as law set by man not as political superior okay so he talks about character uh, categorization of the law then what is left is law improperly so called again he divides this into law by analogy and law by metaphor okay so here he talks law by analogy he is referring to okay he is uh, he is referring to formation of uh, clubs okay like say suppose a local body is formed okay and that local body needs to regulate its functions to regulate its functions it forms uh, some basic rules okay like for example uh, a club is formed okay so if a club is formed for the functioning of club they they have to form some basic rules and those basic rules he called uh, them as law by analogy now here he also talks about uh, international law okay right so next he talks about law by metaphor okay so law by metaphor again he talks about uh, a so, some sort of uh, gravity or an example of gravity where the law remains the same in a particular situation okay so it may not be fixed but for time being for a particular situation it remains the same so he quotes the example of gravity in this case okay so that was a little bit about uh, classification of law by john austin now let's move on with some expect, uh, exceptions so in his analytical theory john austin makes three exceptions one he brings in the concept of declaratory laws he brings in the concept of declaratory laws so this or a form of laws that explains or interprets the provisions of the other laws which are already in force okay so he says or he brings in this concept of declaratory laws what are there so these are the laws that explain or interpret interpret means give a better understanding the provisions of the other laws which are already in existence which are already in force okay declaratory laws next reappealing reappealing laws now what are these reappealing laws these are the laws which reappeal an existing law means probably he is talking about uh, 
a sort of amendment a sort of change if it is necessarily needed then such a law the sovereign can change then he talks about imperfect laws now what are these laws imperfect laws imperfect laws according to john austin or that which create imperfect obligations okay so he uh, or a set of laws that create an a sort of imperfect obligations okay now that was a little bit about <coughs> analytical theory of john austin now as every good theory uh, john uh, austin's theory also had a uh, few a uh, few criticism okay now uh, like for instance solomon criticized that the end of law is a justice and theory misleads okay is misleading in nature solomon says that the end of law in is justice and the theory of austin has misled this concept the concept is a little bit tricky now why it is little bit tricky because john austin talks about only command and talks about duty talks about sanction talks about uh sovereignty he doesn't talk about other aspects of the society like he doesn't talk about morals he doesn't talk about uh society he doesn't talk about judiciary system okay so he lays more focus only on the command aspect okay any definition of law in absence of justice is inadequate now he doesn't talk about justice or he refrains from using the term justice in his law he focuses only on the command he lays more and more focus on command and duty and he lays lays more focus on sanction and he talks more about sovereignty he doesn't talk about the judiciary system he doesn't he completely overlooks or he doesn't uh, say anything about the judiciary or justice and next thing is he completely ignored customs it is through customs that most of the law that has flourished all over the world has come into existence or customs in a way or the foundation principles that have uh formed or that have been uh the key corner stones for the formation of law all over the world but unfortunately john austin completely ignored customs okay so <clears throat> in the words of swedish jurist oliver kerno uh john austin laid more emphasis on command as inevitable constituent of constituent of law so he said that very clearly that again and again john austin focused only on the command and command in the hands of sovereignty so he did not talk about other aspects of the law or in a way he ignored all the other aspects of the law without which it will be very difficult for a law to come into existence okay now other criticism was sanction is not only means to induce obedience so <clears throat> now there may be a situation where a person may not be obedient now if a person is not obedient then there is no guarantee that any amount of sanction that is imposed on such a person make can turn him into an obedient so this was another factor that was criticized or in simple words we can say there is no guarantee that uh, a sanction will bring back a sanction will for sure make a person obedient okay there is no guarantee for this so this was also one of the areas where uh we can say john austin was not able to give sufficient uh clarification related with sanction and bringing of obedience in the followers 
okay so that was uh, a bit short session on uh, analytical theory of john austin uh, i hope that you really like the session okay please do uh, the, it's not very complicated okay so a little bit careful uh, listening is needed and i am sure with careful little bit careful uh, listening definitely it will be doing a lot of good and please do like share and good work please do subscribe to my channel use uh, sufivoice.com okay sufi voice youtube channel sufi voice okay so have a good day take care all the best